love of people. It's another lovely Saturday again. You know, it's always exciting every Saturday to be seated here with Pastor. Pastor is already seated to answer all your questions on any topic of your choice. So if I were you, I would begin to send my question to this, under this, as a comment under this very video you're seeing now. Any question you desire on any area of your choice. And if you were part of those who were following us for the HMT during this week, like I said in the advertisement, if you have any question from the teachings of pastor, you could actually use this means to get answers to your question. Leave it as a comment and pastor will be addressing all your questions. If you have not liked pastor's page, what are you waiting for? Please like pastor's page and also subscribe for notifications so you'll be getting notifications each time pastor comes online. Also follow pastor on his blog, it's sundayadilajablog.com. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe. That blog is loaded with so many informations that will transform your life for the best, not even the better. We have over 700 free messages, both audios and videos on that blog that will be a blessing to you. Several articles, different things, learning materials that will be of help to you. We are going to be going straight into this program. This Saturday is not like every other Saturday. It is our Hashem to week. It's been hot and it's been wonderful. So key in and join us. Share this link. Tag your friends. Invite everyone. It's going to be a, a wonderful one hour with Pastor. He's going to address every of your questions in detail. So join us. Let's go on this ride. Pastor is already seated. We are moving to Pastor now. Tighten your seat, but I will warn you first, your theologies might be shaking, but you're going to be blessed and you'll be transformed. So stay open-heartedly as we join the genius of our time to dissect your questions this evening. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm okay. I'm anticipating. I hope they will ask a question. If they, do, if they will not ask a question about Donald Trump and American <laughs> election, I'm going to be the one to ask myself that question. <laughs> Okay, we already have some questions here for you, and I would like us to go straight. I know the week has been awesome. It's been a wonderful week. The HMT has been awesome and all that. You've been on and on and on and on. And you seem to be fresher and fresher, despite all the teachings, the private meeting with people and all that. What keeps you going? I think our viewers would like to know. Uh, you know, I'm... Not as young as I look. Eh? I'm going to 50 <laughs> years old next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you've got to use wisdom to manage your time, especially if you only sleep like four hours like me, five hours in a good day. So uh, what I do or what I did is that before the HMT proper, I had two weeks that I was alone by myself and where i went for i went for a week of solitude just for my normal solitude then i had to do another week of solitude for the hmt so that keeps me going because when you go for solitude and you are not eating for a week for two weeks uh then uh you know you become fit somehow and you get some more energy more than usual okay so that might be helpful i think i've not been able to go for sports at all this week uh no swimming nothing i've just been here because no time i was even supposed to go for my medical checkup i couldn't because you know it's a busy week so uh, i have a lot of cash up to do next week that's interesting you said being t in solitude for two weeks without food and you're having more energy i think the average person will be thinking without food you should be weak you should i admit it now I didn't eat before the event, but okay. after the, during the event, I'm eating. Okay. So I have enough strength. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pastor. So we are going to go straight into our program. This person is asking the first question for the day. A brother and his wife had been waiting for the fruit of the womb for more than five to seven years. After some miscarriages, the wife suddenly packed out after... We, we don't, you don't want us to start uh, with the Trump question? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I asked for in the beginning. Oh. If the eyes not there. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> so, what, what about the Trump question, do? Formulate one. <laughs> okay. The America election. Beautiful. Pastor, you know, before the election and everything, you actually, when viewers asked you about your choice 
for the American president, you gave two opinions. You were like, if you're going to be voting biasly as a Christian, following your being a Christian and joining your Christian brothers, you were going to be voting for Trump. But if you're going to be voting like a right-thinking person, you're going to be voting for Hillary. So if I will ask, seeing the outcome of this result and everything, what do you think, basically? I think uh, Trump didn't win the election. Really? Yeah, because uh, the popular vote was won by Hillary. Okay. The popular vote, the vote like one on one. Okay. But God gave, gave the victory to Trump. Oh. I think Trump didn't win the election, but God won it for him. Mm, okay. I think that there, is, there are some things that God probably sees in the spirit realm that God, for which God knows that he is the one that will be able to do the job this time. Okay. Uh, what I'm feeling is that for anybody to see the victory of Trump, Trump and not acknowledge God yeah. will mean to be insensitive in the spirit. Wow. I think this is clearly God's, God's work and God's and at work. Right. No matter what fears are there and no matter what concerns are there, if you see the way the media Right. was against him and if you see if you see the way the establishment and the you know the whole thing the stars hollywood everybody was against him. Right. who is who god gave trump this victory wow. and i believe I, I had written about two months ago yeah there was a video from trump right. that i saw him where i saw him speaking yes about christianity about the christian faith right and I had written that time that this yeah. guy is convincing me. Yes, you do. I probably believe that it is, I think he probably has it in his heart to stand for Christian values. Yeah. Despite every other thing that might not be right. But I think it's, he has taken the position of God. Okay. And I think thanks to that, God wants to give America the chance. And I think he's, Trump is a kind of guy that no matter what you have against him, is a kind of guy that will probably do. He has the energy to do what he wants to do, what, what he puts his heart into. Do. Yeah. So I think he's going to do a lot of good for the Christian community. And especially knowing that a lot of Christians surround him. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure that the same, that it, will be good, it, it will be a good presidency for foreigners okay. who are there, okay. for immigrants. Okay. If, for immigrants, it might be a bad time. Okay. For the minority, it might be a bad time. Okay. But for the traditional Christian people, just like I said, right. it will be a wonderful one. So if it's going to be uh, a vote for, you know, as a, as a Christian for me, I would have voted for him, like I said. But for general humanity, as a human being, I would have voted for Hillary. Hmm. Okay. But this one, I see it as the hand of God. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. And if I could go further than that, yeah. I see uh, for myself, right. I hope and I think, I'm not seeing clearly yet because I've not bothered myself about my America. I'm not, I don't care for America right now. I care more about Africa All and right. Nigeria. So mm -hmm. Nigeria is my, is, my, is my passion. And I want to challenge Nigerians who are afraid of the Trump presidency <laughs> to come back home. Yeah. I want it to be... Let it be as difficult there as possible so that they could come and help us in Africa. So my own passion is about Africa. Mm. But let me say something about Trump's presidency in my own mind, in my own view, regarding the world. What is it going to do for the world? I think it's going to be good for the world. Okay. I think his presidency is going to be good for the world, not for the whole world, but for in the average for the world. Okay. I think his presidency is going to be bad for the Muslims. Okay. His presidency might be bad for the immigrants. His presidency might be bad for the Mexicans. His presidency might be bad for Africans. But his presidency will be good for the whole world in the sense that he will agree with Putin. Okay. His presidency might be bad for Ukraine <laughs> because Ukraine is fighting Putin and Russia. But I think if there is agreement between Russia and Putin, we escape we would have escaped the threat of Third, Third World, World War. Okay. So, which is good. And then another area where I see good coming in uh, through his presidency for the world is that 
is going to promote Christian values in America for sure. Yeah. And that Christian value is going to promote in America will give room to Christians in nations to begin to arrive, to, to raise their voices. Yeah. So the Christian's faith is going to be defended. It's not going to allow ISIS and Muslims to be cutting the, the, the throat of Christians anyhow and nobody is talking about it. He's going to fight it. Yeah. He's going to stop it. And Putin is fighting that too. Okay. So it's going to be good in the terms of traditional Christian values. So they are going to stand together against the bullying of Christians. Okay. And that will embolden Christians in their countries to stand tall and to be able to stand for Christ. That will also raise up their heads okay. in the nations of the world, especially in Europe. Right. That is bad and good. But it's good, it's good. it might be good for the Christian values again, because those are now regarded as conservative values. But for the immigrants and for immigration, people who are looking for economic refugees, they might find things stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> or, or economic refuge, who want to be economic refuge and who want to get visa to run to, away from their countries to other places, they might find difficult. So, but generally, concerning Christians, I'm still maintaining my, something that Trump is the best one for Christians. So, and it's going to, I believe that since God allowed him to win, just like I have been saying in the beginning, as a Christian, he's the one to carry the day. And I think God will use him. Wow. But for the whole human being, general humanity, Hillary would have been better. Hmm. Okay. But since we are biased as Christians, maybe it will be for our good. <laughs> well, I'm not biased on the boat's rhyme, though. <laughs> anyway, it's You're okay. not biased as Christians. So you want the Christian and Muslims to be in the same? No. Um, as a Christian, we are biased on our own. Now. We want things to be on our own way. Not, not necessarily. From my perspective, I, it's a wonderful as a, uh, sorry, analysis you give. But from my perspective, okay, Christian apart too, I don't just like the values that she represents and everything. And I no, just no, I'm just saying that is for Christians. Okay. Is it going to be what? What do I mean by bias for Christians? Okay. Anything that is pushing our agenda and our own faith. Faith is yes. that not bias for us? Is bias for us? Okay. But what they want to do is to create a world where everybody is equal in the sense that Muslims, atheists, gay, uh, homosexuals, everybody is just equal. But we want a biased country. I want, for example, I want a world that is ruled by Christian values, okay. not by general human values. Okay. So that's why I'm talking about bias. Uh -huh. I get it. Yeah. All right, Pastor. So, so when it comes to Christian bias right. for the Christian values, that's what I mean that uh, Trump will be good for the Christian values. But when you talk about for everybody, for example, people who want to go to America, get visa, they are going to have a lot of problems. People who want to go there to work as economic refugees, they are going to have a lot of problems. Muslims are going to have a lot of problems. Although talking humanly, you know, not all Muslims are bad. Right. You know, some of them might suffer. Then there is going to be a lot of problem with economic giants, China, uh, Japan, they are going to have trouble with America. But with Christians, things are going to be good. Okay. <laughs> awesome. We'll look forward to my, his leadership. See, see my prediction, how it will happen. <laughs> yeah. Thank but you I so much. But I think uh, if uh, Trump does well, right. and with all the Christians around him, I think he stands a good chance of doing well. Okay. If he does well, my prediction is that conservatives in America will rule for the next 20 years. Oh, really? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> for the next 10 years, for sure. OK. All right, Pastor. Thank you so much for that detailed analysis. Yeah, so I will continue with the question. But if the Muslim, no, yeah, no. If the, if the conservative, I'm, I keep on downloading. I keep on downloading. Right. If the, if the, if the conservatives will rule, for 20 years in America, America will come back to the old America. Oh, okay. uh, in the sense that the power of the media, right now media is the God of America. Right. Right now media is the, it's just like the, is the bow, bow a bail of America. But uh, 
their power needs to be reduced. Right. And the power and authority of the church needs to arise. Yeah. So, uh, and maybe, you know, maybe Trump will be able to do something about prayer back to school, or maybe he'll be able to do something about, you know, banning abortion. Maybe he'll be able to do something about gay. Those are very, going to be very difficult for him to do. I don't think he's going to find it easy, but who knows? <laughs> I keep on downloading. I'm just yeah. picking up things and downloading. <laughs> well, we hope for the best for him. So, can I go ahead? Then? I hope so. I think so. <laughs> All right, this person said, a brother and his wife had been waiting for the fruit of the womb for more than five to seven years. After some miscarriages, the wife suddenly packed after disagreement on change of attitude from the wife, only to discover that she has moved to another man who impregnated her and delivered a baby there. What is the hope of the Christian brother? He wants to remarry now. What's the biblical point of view for such issue? I don't get it. Okay, this is what the person is saying. This couple were married for five to seven years, from what I understood from the question, and they didn't have the fruit of the womb. So after some misunderstanding, the wife moved out of the house, only for him to discover that he went to another man's house that impregnated her, and she had a child for that man. Now the brother wants to remarry. What is the biblical view on that? I will not be asking for biblical view if I'm the one. Okay. What will you be asking? <laughs> I think the problem here is not for the biblical view. Okay. If you are going to be asking the question of biblical view here, then he doesn't want to find what his own problem was. Uh huh. And he doesn't want to find out what led the wife to behave like that. Okay. Yeah. So, because this from the story and from the way he has just narrated the story now. It means that you said all of a sudden he discovered that the wife has gone to be pregnant for another man, moved out and got pregnant. So what happened between the time she moved out and the time she got pregnant and then the time she delivered for the other guy? It, it doesn't happen the next day as far as I'm concerned. Pregnancy could take at least nine months. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so where, what was he doing all that time? Where was he? Probably he was. He just found out. That's what is really there. All of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not all of a sudden. Okay, only what, to discover. Only to discover. Okay. <laughs> only to discover that what? <laughs> <laughs> only to. <laughs> <laughs> to discover that she was pregnant. <laughs> uh -huh. That's exactly what I mean. Only to discover. Just all. For me, that means all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> Only to discover. So where was he when he discovered? For me, if I were the one, I would have said, if your wife moved out, you don't even know where he moved out to. You didn't find out. You only to discover that she was pregnant. Before she moved, after she moved out, and before you discovered that she was pregnant, what were you doing about looking for her? What were you doing about caring for her? What were you doing about, you know, getting her back? What were you doing about reconciling with her only to discover? You know, when the, until the lions have their own historians, the story of hunting, the hunting story, the hunting story, the story, the victory from the hunting field is going always to decide, it's going to be favoring only the hunters. Okay. So if we are going to just be listening to the story of, from the hunter's side, <laughs> the man's side, we might be thinking that that woman is a devilish woman. Okay. But I, I, I've never seen a woman that was so taken care of very well in her own, <laughs> in her own marital uh, uh, house, home. Then she would just all of a sudden pack her tents and then move and then get pregnant for another man. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe it happens. But I have not lived long enough to say. <laughs> so if I were to be in the position <laughs> of that young man, yes. I don't think it's the biblical, the biblical opinion, it was there before him, even before me I was born. It was always there. The people copy, you no, know, leave him alone. But what about? <laughs> yeah, that people copy, you know, everybody knows it. Okay. 
Okay. But I would have said, what did I do wrong? Okay. If he could have asked that question, what did I do wrong? Or what can I do now? I would have thought, yeah, that guy is genuine. He really wants to repair and restore his family. But the question is that seems to uh, be coming across to me the way I'm listening to you now. As if it has something to do with your remarriage, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, everything is clear. So it's not about the girl, let's just forget about it. It's about me. How can I uh, get on with my life, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. That's why I think he has his own answer before he has. He just wants to get my own confirmation. That's why I say it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so what is your own confirmation since he wants to get your no, own No, so, since somebody has already made it up his mind, I don't think I need any confirmation in this case. Okay, <laughs> you actually ask your biblical view. The biblical view mm -hmm. is that husband love thy wife. If he could love that girl the way he's supposed to do it, like Christ, love the church, I think they will be talking about that. <laughs> That story. Okay. But the situation has happened now. That's the biblical. If you are talking of the Bible side. Okay. Is that not what he asked for? <laughs> <laughs> but he's asking, he's asking that when she's already out. <laughs> they want to put me in the corner so that I will say, <laughs> yeah, so that I will say, okay, now that she's pregnant, we could go back now. Uh, let him go and consult with his own pastor and find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hear what that one will say too. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. okay. So, but pastor, uh -huh. I would like to ask, will you, if, let's say he was your member, yes. will you say he should go and reconcile with the lady to bring her back? No. Okay. What would be the advice? Okay. I would say, go and get me that girl. Okay. Let me hear her own side, too. Okay. Mm, that's what I would say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, if you're the one that asked that question, I believe you got pastor's answer. <laughs> so, the second person said, dear pastor, what can one do to increase the anointing on his life? Can one lose the anointing? And if so, how do one recover it? I think we have already answered that question now. Mm, can't remember. Okay. First of all, don't be concerned about the anointing too much. Okay. Don't play that one. Be concerned about God. Number one. Be concerned about discovering Him. Be concerned about knowing Him. Be concerned about copying Him, emulating Him. And be concerned about personal relationship, friendship with Him. If you have that in order, you don't even need to look for anointing. It will be looking for you. Okay. Mm. All right. So, if you're the one that <laughs> asks that question, Pastor is saying, don't be too conscious on the anointing. Your consciousness will be on building personal relationship with God and anointing will chase you. If I get you in summary. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. This person is saying, Dear Pastor Sunday, more grace, sir. I have been to HM to summer fast and anniversary celebration, even though it's been quite challenging keeping up with the sonship program. It's great joining with the HMT on Facebook. My wife was also able to join some sessions, which is really very good. I watched the night session and the presentation on the Nigerian project. It's a very enormous project, but certainly achievable. I have completed my registration from the day after you first announced it with the 2000 Ukrainians plan. Based on your teaching, based on your teaching, rather, I am just wondering whether the prototype concept will be best here for significant transformation within a shorter time period. I am talking about developing model city, model town, model village first, or even model local government first, using all the detailed plans presented tonight. Let's assume Idomila. Ijebu Ode or Shegamo or Abiokuta is selected using John's criteria and this model town is transformed in all the areas of influence and social infrastructure and technology, security, healthcare, transportation, etc., along with the value system and mindset changes. I believe this then becomes a very strong incentive for community. 
governments and agencies, I think this will speak much louder. What do you think, sir? Well, I don't think that the brother has uh, listened to all my broadcasts uh, in regards to Nigeria because I have mentioned it that I have a... I, uh, okay, maybe I didn't mention it on Ask Pastor Sunday, but I've mentioned it in my um, live broadcast, live mm -hmm. streaming, okay. uh, about my plans for uh, Edomila. Uh, I com my father comes from Ejebude, but I come from Edomila. Edomila is what I regard as my town or my village. I'm a village boy. I'm not a town boy. Okay. So my village is always on my heart. By the grace of God, once God releases me from Ukraine, I have a gift for the people of Edomila. Okay. Maybe, maybe when I was growing up, it was like 40 houses, huts, uh, you know, village. Now, maybe they said it has 30 years later, maybe it's grown, maybe 100, 200 houses. My dream would be to go there I want to rebuild the whole village, build 200 houses or 100 houses, anyhow, and take them and put all of them to leave their huts and their houses and for them to get, get, for every family to get a house as a gift that will be a modern house, European, with all facility, European standard, and uh, everything that will make for a modern living. A water system, <laughs> uh, electricity, water supply, con air conditioner, anything that will make life easy for the modern person. Uh, when I was growing up, I never knew what water system was. I never saw one until I went to another village, another town. And so that's what is on my heart. There is no road to that village from the Ijebu, the no normal road. Of course, I will plan to fix that. Basically what he's saying, we want to create a model town uh, with modern infrastructure and sophistication. That's my own personal gift. That's not going to be from the money and the funds of uh, the, project. the project for Nigeria. That's just my own personal investment. Uh, just to acknowledge the land that gave birth to me and fed me and where I worked the first 19 years of my life. And if anybody still remembers me, they, even if they don't remember me, they will find, the, they will see their houses and I think they might like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Pastor. Awesome plan you have. Awesome. Yeah, this person is saying, hello, Pastor. I bless God for you and the work that you do. I am one of your online congregation. Please, I am going through a lot of storm in my marriage. I just need your advice. My story is too long for me to write, to write everything. Please, is there any number that I could reach you on? Please, I really need to talk to you and, if possible, help talk to my husband. I love him, but he is so caught up. up. Help. 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 He, she would like you to help talk to her husband. Help talk. Yeah. Okay. I love him, but he is so caught up in his own world that I have decided to go for a divorce. We are going home this December, and I have resolved that if the matter is not solved, I will file for divorce. Please, I need your help. Okay. I don't give telephone. I used to give telephone everywhere on telephone, everywhere. but I've been, <laughs> I've been tracked and tricked. Uh, so, so people have abused that opportunity. Uh, and I'm no more going to, I don't have telephone. I don't even have telephone anyway. So I don't give telephone. I don't have telephone. I, I don't use telephone anymore. Uh, so I will tell the person to write to my email. And my email is... Uh, Pastor at godembassy.org. Yes. .com or .org? .org. .org. Yeah. Can you tell them? Okay. So if you're the person that wrote us asking that question, please write Pastor to his email at pastor at godembassy.org and pastor will respond to you and the discussion you better will go say from it there. clearly enough so that you'll get it the email is pastor at godembassy.org pastor at godembassy one word dot org okay 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 so this person is saying can you please explain more about titan for me because this ministry is very complicated when it comes to teachings thanks 
the Ministry of Titan mm -hmm. is very complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if, if it's so complicated, so you probably expect me not to be able to answer the complicated question in one minute. So my advice to you is to go to my series, okay. yes, either to the blog or to YouTube or to Facebook, you know, yeah. and find this church. Is this under church? Station? Yeah, it was under church. Tight is not meant just meant for church. I think that was the caption. Yeah, it's under church series, yes. series on church. Yes. And the message is called what? Tight is not just meant it's for tight church. Is tight just meant for it's church? Tight only meant for church. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So go and look for the, my message on tight. It will help you. Okay, so if you're the one that asked that question, please go to Pastor's blog. The blog is sundayadilajablog.com. Go under his video blogs, check the series, the series on the church. So if you check there, you see his message on Titan. It's tight only for the church, something like that. I don't know if that's exactly what, but check through the church series and you'll find the message on Titan. Listen to the message and all your questions will be answered. Then this person is saying, Thank you, Pastor, for your teaching about money principles. How can I buy your book, Money Won't Make You Rich, from Kotonu, Benin Republic? It is there also in Benin Republic in all Christian bookstores. Okay. And also uh, in okada.com. Okay. So if you, if you don't have, if you don't have a bookstore okay. near you, you could check okadabook.com. You will Okada get... books. Okadabooks.com, you get money will make you rich there. But apart from that, there are lots of Christian books in Kotonou that has the book. So just Christian check. Bookstores. Bookstores, yeah. Check for the book, Money Will Make You Rich in Christian Bookstores, and you will find one. Um, this person is saying, what is the greatest hindrance of faith, and how do you overcome it? The greatest hindrance of faith is religion and tradition. Okay. The Bible says that because of your tradition, you have rendered the power of God of no effect. Traditions equals religion. Religion equals tradition. Therefore, religion and tradition kill faith and render the power of faith of no effect. Wow. So the things that actually are hindrances to faith that destroys faith is religion and tradition. So how can he overcome it? Be, rest, be less religions, religious and be more, uh, build more personal relationship with the Lord on a personal basis. Okay, okay. okay. If I emphasize, look for messages on personal relationship with God. Uh -huh. And de-emphasize religion in your life. Awesome, awesome. So if you're the person that asked that question, Pastor has just answered you, religion and tradition is the major killer of faith. So, just reduce your religion and don't focus on tradition. That is the solution to no, that. No, and focus on personal. Relationship with God. Yes. Reduce the religion and tradition, then focus on personal relationship with God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good day, sir. I just need more explanation on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So that you speak in tongues, I, I suppose, or what? Or just to be filled in the, with the Holy Spirit? Not specified, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe speaking tongues. <sighs> you might need to go for individual consultation for that one. Right. Because I don't uh, think I, <laughs> it's something I can do right now. Okay. Uh, I'd get a book on that topic. Right. Or meet with a pastor or somebody who is already filled in the Spirit. Right. And let them help you <laughs> to practically. You, you, it has to be practical. It's not some theory. They have to help you to get filled in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. Okay. This person is saying, Hello, sir. I have followed your teachings and posts for a fairly long while now. And I must bless God for what a marvelous gift you are to the body of Christ. God bless you richly. My question is regarding the issue of relationships. I've been close friends with a wonderful lady for a while now. And the more we communicate and spend time together, the more I see how compatible we are and how, as a team, we can do great things for God. We share a lot of values, and to an extent, her personality just suits my nature. However, she happens to be a sickler. She has a sickle cell gene, and as a result, she may be prone to incident health challenges. 
even though she looks and feels healthy at the moment. I have no intention of just hanging around for a while, only to eventually disappear. If I'm in, I'm in for the long haul marriage. However, at the moment, I'm in a fix, trying to reconcile my emotions and goals with the reality of things. Considering her health status, I really do not know if I should press on and go ahead into the relationship or back out now that it's not yet official. Okay. Thank read, you, sir. Read his description of the lady in the beginning. Read that thing again. Okay. <laughs> Hello, sir. I followed your teachings and no, put. No, not what you're talking about. Me. I'm not the lady. Okay, my uh, question is regarding the issue of relationship. I've been close friends with a wonderful lady for a while now. A wonderful lady, what one? Mm -hmm. And the more we communicate and spend time together, the more I see how compatible. She's compatible too. We are, and and how as a team we can do great things for God. She's capable of doing three great things. Three. We share a lot of values. You have similar value four. And to an extent, her personality just suits my nature. Her personality suits your nature. Five. <laughs> However, she happens to be a sickler. Stop. Okay. That lady, she's a human being, no? She has feelings. She has emotion. You are talking to her, you are smiling now. And she's compatible. But then you are thinking, because of your, def you know, the challenge that it's not you to blame, who is to blame for it? Even though I like you, everything is okay. But you just go and die in the gutter there because you have this thing. Because if I reject her, then every other person should reject her too. Well, I want to ask the person a question, a few questions. Okay. Number one question. Did you see of recent a situation whereby a lady was dying of cancer, having one week or four days more to leave, and the man came and got married to her on a dying bed four days before she died? If you didn't see, there was a situation like that. Number two, have you seen a woman, have you had the story of a woman in Texas during the time of George Bush that was condemned to death she was given life imprisonment, and then when she was she was given life sentence, you no, know, to die, you know, death sentence. The one man, a priest, the pastor who was going to minister to her in the prison, that pastor went there, fell in love with him, with her, while she was on the death row, got married to her, and died, and the man remained single, both because they, they fell in love. And have you also not seen the man that was dying on the deathbed and the lady came, got in, uh, engaged and, you know, married her on the day, married him on the day he died or something like that. So where do we have love? In your own case or in their own case? Maybe you could answer that question first. Okay. Yes, that's cool. All right. Um... I'm going to ask a little bit. The only other thing is, if you really have doubt about her or concern, tell her about your concern. Tell her about your doubts. And tell her, let's go to the hospital. Let's go and go to medical checkup. And let's hear what the medical doctor will say. Maybe all your fear are even groundless. Maybe when you get to the hospital, maybe they will say, no problem. Yes, she has this sickle cell, but no problem. You know, people live with sickle cell. In fact, I saw an article the other day that a woman, that the first sickle cell patient in Nigeria, so she was 90 years old or so, or 80 years old. People live with it. Just go for the medical consultation. And if you really love the person, love will think about the other person first. Okay, but let's say medically in the case, let's, for instance, he didn't stay here now, this here now, but I'm going to ask to throw more lights in case our viewers will, viewer will need that. If he is AS and this lady is SS, basically, so what would be your advice? Because in that case, their offsprings are going to be in danger. That's where the risk is going to be. What would be your um, response? Are you going to just say he should go ahead if he loves her? 
or probably they are not going to have kids, maybe adopt. What would be your um, response to him? Let's say that's his fear. If he is AS, love is supreme. Okay. If they love each other as much, right, they should then decide among themselves: Are they ready to forego and not have children if their love is strong enough? Okay. Number two, there is a lady on our program. Right. I don't mean to mention her name. She and her husband, they were the same, whatever you say. AS, AS. AS, AS. Yeah. And they're having twins who are healthy kids. Okay. You know, go, you know that is possible because it was the will of God, according to them. So, but even if they, are, they love each other, children come later. But if you are marrying for children, of course. Right. You don't want to endanger the life of those children if that is your purpose of marriage. But if your relationship is your purpose of marriage, then you, you have to decide. Okay. If you're the one that asked that question, I believe you got your answer. This person is saying, in my culture, we are to told, or rather, it is a taboo for a woman to marry a man she is older than. Pastor, I would like to know your opinion about that. If that's your culture, I cannot have any opinion. <laughs> I cannot, if it is your, you have already given me the answer, the opinion already. If it is your culture, that, that's that culture, that is the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, what opinion can I have? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the, that is the person's culture. Yes. But he wants to know your opinion. So uh, I'm thinking before this question comes, probably he doesn't want to live by that culture. Maybe but he didn't say it. He's, but he's asking for your opinion. About what? What's your opinion? Are you okay with a, a lady marrying a man <laughs> she's older? You read older? that question again. <laughs> okay. In my culture, we are told, or rather it is a taboo for a woman to marry a man she is older than. Pastor, I would like to know your opinion about that. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Did you hear the question yourself? <laughs> <laughs> ah, or you want to help him out then you have to rephrase the question okay if it's a sculpture you've answered you don't have an opinion okay pastor what is your stand about a woman marrying a man she's older than ah, okay, that is different okay. now that's a question for me okay if my stance is that love is supreme right if it is within uh a no reasonable age bracket if she's older than him not more than 10 years okay i think it is between one to 10 years older if they really love themselves it could be manageable but if she's older for more than 10 years i'll begin to have some concerns and doubt okay so one to ten it's okay ten is a bit much it's a, when it's ten it's a little bit more Five to ten is already on the higher side, but not at least not more than ten years old. Okay, so if you're the one that asked that question, you got your. But answer. I don't connect that with the taboo. My yeah. own something that if he's older than ten, if she's older than ten years, I don't connect that to any traditional taboo. I just connect it to logic and common sense because women, especially after they begin to give birth they tend to grow older than faster even when they are the, of the same age they try to grow older than the man and uh, sometimes you see a woman who is 60 years old and the man who is 60 years old and the man still looks like a 40 year old man or uh, you know uh they they might be 70 and he looks younger and she looks old. so talk less of if she is naturally older you know you might, you might be more tempted to be thinking that oh you wanted a younger woman so it's just logically is the only concern our okay but apart from that there is no big concern no. okay <laughs> all right this person is saying how should a woman recognize if a man is committed or if he is just flattering and vice versa how should a man know that a woman is committed to a relationship a woman is committed how, yeah, both ways. How should a man know a woman is committed? How should a woman know a man is committed or he's just flattering? Now, who is flattering who now? He said vice versa. That means either the woman or the man. Can you read it again? Let me read it. it word for word. Okay. How should you 
how should a woman recognize if a man is committed or if he is just flattering okay. and vice versa how should a man know what a woman when a woman is committed to a relationship it cannot be vice versa okay because the nature of women is that it is the man who is supposed to prove his own commitment and seriousness to her. Okay. Because he is the one going after her. You must convince, if, if I'm a man, I must convince her. I must convince you that I am committed enough to take care of you. I am committed enough to, to, to marry you, to... You know, I am committed. I, it, I have to prove to you. You have to sit down and just say, do all your somersaulting. Let me see if it's enough or not. <laughs> That's your, what all the woman is supposed to do. That you just come out, just jump and down. Just, anyone that you want to do perform. And then I will show you and I will tell you if it's enough. If it's not enough, go back and look for another one. Or go back to your father's house. If it's <laughs> enough, I will say, <laughs> I'm ready to go with you. So a woman doesn't prove anything. Is the guy that's supposed to provide it something. Okay, Pastor, but there are some instances, at least, I've heard some cases where probably a woman says yes to a man, like she's double dating. Yes. She says yes to a man. Yes. And she's dating another one. Yes. Basically, and probably later... I understand where she's coming from. Okay. She shouldn't double date, but I understand where she's coming from. Where could that be, Pastor? Because she's not convinced. A woman that is totally won over... Right. A woman that is totally convinced about the genuineness of the man, she doesn't even think that there's another man again on the surface of the earth. That's what I can tell you. She is totally swept off her feet, and to how you are the only man on the surface of the earth. But if she is still double dating and telling her, it means you have done a bad job with that man. <laughs> <laughs> You have not convinced I know. That's what I can tell you. Okay. <laughs> so how should he know? That's, that was he, the question. But he says she's double dating. No, how should he know if she's committed? Or how should she know if a man is committed? How should she know? Yeah, it's part of the question. That's what I'm saying. Okay. She should just sit down until she's, you know, how would she know? If she's, she, somebody is coming to approach her. Yes. She's, she, 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 I don't know what he's telling her. But she should sit down there and not even move and respond until she is totally satisfied, totally. Okay. That, yes, this guy, he has, he has really gotten me. Okay. Yes. So, if you want, I can tell you how. But it says I'm not the I don't want to give the secret out. Because if I'm going to say how now, the guy is going to go over and repeat my own word to her. And I don't want it to be my own word and my own strategy. I want it to be his own. Let him go. <laughs> the Bible says nobody knows the part of the man to the woman. No. So his own too, he should find his own. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you the key is to get a lady, but then I will be giving him needful help. Oh, I see. Okay. Then this person is saying, what do you think of long distance relationships? Is it good or bad? I answered that question sometime before, no? Mm -mm. Okay. Ah. If it is occasional, if it is occasional, right. not forever, yeah. but occasional or out of necessity, for example, when I married my wife, see, for the first six months, we didn't live together. Okay. We married like this, and she went back to her town because we were still trying to get her documents to get her transfer. And for six months, we didn't live together. But it shouldn't be forever. So after six months, we've been living together forever after that. So for it, it should, I, I, don't, I don't think there should be long, long distance relationship. It's not proper. Unless it is just out of some situation for a short time of occasional, but not constant. For a long time. Okay. If you're the one that asked that question, thank you. Got your answer. All right. This person is saying, should a person rather give money or buy food for a beggar, homeless person they see on the street? I don't know what... I think the person should give that person 
truth, training, mm -hmm. direction, and if necessary, money. Okay. Okay. This person said, in the light of the differences between women and men, when it comes to communication, how would the ideal woman in politics, economy, social leadership behave so that she can be taken seriously? Uh, that's a lady in the public yeah, domain. Uh, domain. She should try her best to adjust herself to the men's standard because our world is ruled by men, unfortunately. Okay. It's a men's world. So she has to try her best to copy the logical mindset of the men, the factual mindset of the men. The, you know, she should just shut her emotions down. I'm going to use a very bad example. Right. But it's similar to what a prostitute has to do before she could engage in prostitution. She has to shut herself down. So a man, a woman that is going to that area, or public domain, politics, or everything, she has to remove her female sensitivity and shut herself down as a woman and just walk as, you know, factual, sta no, statistics, sta tactical, strategical, without being a woman. Okay, will you, th will you say Margaret Thatcher was a good example of that? Oh, yeah, she was a super <laughs> example of that. Okay, so if you're the one that asked that question, well, Pastor said you have to shut down your emotions and begin to communicate like the men and think like the men. I think Margaret Thatcher would be a good example for you. Maybe you can listen to one of two of her speeches, then you'll see how she talks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this person is saying, Pastor, should a person write, oh, sorry, we, we did that. Hillary, Hillary Clinton is a good example, too, for that. Mm, okay. For people who admire her. Okay. Then this person is saying, there are people who have been born with both sex organs. What would you say to people who believe this is a mistake of God, or how would you classify those people? Uh, I don't think it's a mistake of God. I think it's a mistake of nature, right. but not mistake of God. God creates the spirit, gives the spirit. And the body is, is, is created from the union of man and woman. So a lot of things could have gone wrong in that process. So that led to that, but not necessarily God himself from heaven decided to create the body. Just like people uh, are born disabled, things could go wrong uh, in, the, in the structuring of the human body. But I don't think it's God who has made a mistake. Okay, so what example will you give to those people? Let's say these are hermaphrodites. Should they, uh, will you, in your opinion, will you say they should go for a surgery and probably get rid of one of the sex organs? or? Should they live like that? Well, if you are born with, uh, like, joint twins. Yeah, conjoined those, twins. Conjo uh? Conjoined twins, yeah. Conjoined twins, okay. Mm -hmm. you, what wisdom says, go and correct it. Right. The same thing with the sex of the woman or man. Okay. They have to correct it. Okay. Everything. Just like saying you, you are born now, your hand is doing like this, or, or, and you have to go and correct it. Okay. All right. If you're the one that asked the question, I believe you got your answer. So it's correctable. You could correct it. And it's not a mistake of God, but a mistake of nature. So says Pastor. So like this other person is saying, mm -hmm, what do you think of same-sex same schools? Should girls schools? and... Yeah. Okay. Should girls and boys be separated in education? If yes... Why? If no, why not? I went to same sex school, right. not same sex, uh, men mixed school, boys and girls in the same school. Right. And there are also, I also know that there are boys school and girls school. For me to judge, I must be able to know what is happening in boys school and what's happening in girls school and the difference between the two before I could be able to join, to judge. 
as, for, as of now, I don't know which is better. Okay. The one I went to, I was happy with it. But I also know that some people went to women's uh, girls' school alone only, and they're happy with it. There's those who went to boys' school only, they're happy with it as well. So don't have an opinion yet. Okay. So you don't think that probably for women just going to women's school and men going to men's, just men's school, you don't think it might have some social effects, probably real, um, interaction effects from my senior brother, people? my senior brother went to boys school alone. Right. Yeah. He came out good. Right. My sister, junior, I mean senior sister went to girl school only. Yeah. Also good. I went to middle school. I'm also good. Okay. So All right. So it might not have as much effect no, as you think though. No. Okay. This person is saying, what do you think of artificial insemin insemination for women who do not have a husband but who want to have babies? Is it okay or Bablika? If yes, why? If no, why not? I've discussed that a few days ago. We had a, a discussion on that a few days ago uh, on our daily broadcast. I personally think if the lady has money and resources and training mm -hmm. knowledge enough to be able to take care of herself a child and to be able to play the role of father and mother and have all the resources necessary so that she will not be under stress and I mean, under duress and in such a way that she will not be able to cater for the baby if she has everything why not I will, I will rather go for it. Okay. And you don't, do, do, you, um, do you think, or probably what's your perspective, do you, th you don't think that probably the ascent of a father in the life of a child, does it not have any effect or psychological effect on, in the life of a child? Oh, it has huge effect. <laughs> the problem of our world is absent of fathers. Okay. And uh, I, have a, I, have, I have five books on that topic. Uh, the, the effect of uh, absence of fathers in the life of uh, ch children, a girl and a boy. Yeah, but absence of father does not, he's not talking about uh, either the lady is married to a man or not. And it's not always the presence of a man that means father. Okay. Uh, most families that their children are troublesome and end up in prison, a lot of them, 47% of them have male in the house. They have fathers. They have bio, 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 no, bio, biological, biological fathers. fathers. Mm -hmm. But 47 of them still end up in prison or cri as criminals. The, the, the reason is because the fact that a man is present in the home doesn't mean that that's a father. Okay. So Someone can always find father figure as maybe a godfather, an uncle, a brother, a pastor, you know, different ways. Okay. Uh, but the most important thing is even not a male figure. The most important thing is the truth and principles. So a woman could be bringing up a child, I mean children, by herself. But if she studies the principles and the truth, of what a man is supposed to do and applies them and knows also what a woman is supposed to do and applies them intentionally it might even work out better than where a man and a woman is there and they don't know the principles okay so okay. it's the principles that matter right. it's not the presence of the body what like this flesh. yeah 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 so if you're the one <laughs> you're the one that asks that question you got your answer so when it comes to fatherhood and all that it's not just necessarily the man being there physically but the principle so a man could be at home and yet that part is still missing in the life of a child so our time is up we have one last question to go this person is saying, you talked about not pitying men this morning as they deemed it as a sign of weakness. What about those men who actually ask you to not give them a solution but rather empathize with them since the opposite will imply that you, are, you as a woman are not empath empathetic or too cold slash harsh, etc. And that you know better than him in his opinion. 
if he's asking for that, mm -hmm. it means that is his need. Okay. But that is also a sign of weakness for the man. Okay. A man could feel like that sometimes, but it should be very rare and occasional. But if she's, if he's constantly asking for that, it means he's not busy. He's not. Uh, it means he's having problem. Okay. He's not. It's not manly all the time. It's. Uh, it means he's having challenges. Maybe he was brought up by a woman only, okay. and that's what he knows. Okay. So if a, a woman, let's say a, a wife that is married to such a man, what would be your advice for her? She's the husband. If she's the one giving comfort to him and, uh, you know, and he's the one begging her to give her, to comfort her, it means she, they, she, he only has something between the legs. Apart from that, he doesn't have anything left. He will. Okay. <laughs> So naturally, that's not the position of men, but there could be some exceptions. Or you think there, there are no exceptions? There could be some abnormalities. Oh, you want to call it, you want to refer to it as abnormalities? Yes. Oh, Only okay. occasionally there might be some need for that, right. really. But if it is the state of the man all, that, all the time, it's abnormality. Okay. Wow. Hmm, that's a hard pill to swallow. So if you're the one that asked that question, I believe you got your answer. So Because a lot of people are like that these days, unfortunately, because they are brought up in families where uh, only a woman is there. Mm -hmm. And the woman doesn't, didn't even apply any principle of a man. Right. And she was just a mama for, so mama that is doing everything for the child, for the son and just pitying him, pitying him. So he's used to pit, being pitied by the mother, and that's the only thing he knows. So they, they never help him to become a man. Okay, mm. okay. That will bring us to the end of this section today. And don't be in a haste to go. We are going to be going straight live for... Send him to the military. Send him to the military. They should send the man to the military. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or a boot camp could help. A boot camp, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of boot camp, Pastor? Like military type. Okay. <laughs> so please, you're asked to send that man to the military or send it to a boot camp that that will help. So don't be in a haste to go. We are going to be live for the HMT broadcast. Today is the yeah, last HMT day. HMT broadcast is going to be a, a unique broadcast today. Yeah. We are going to be sharing experiences with all the people so who are here for the HMT, right. those who have not left, and they are going to be sharing their, what they learned and what they got. It's going to be a just interaction, interaction center, section. Yes. So you're welcome to join mm -hmm. us. And if you've not liked Pastor's page, please do so. Subscribe to his YouTube page. That is... And hooray, we are 100 million. Woo! Reach. That's great. Yeah, that's the, our reach on Facebook. We are... Is it not over um, a little bit over 100 million? Mm -hmm. But let's just say 100 million. Congratulations to all our subscriber, uh, subscribers, and we are inviting new ones to join us. Step with and enjoy. 110. Wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So you heard it 110 million yeah. rich. Woo! <laughs> Interesting. It's One increasing. 121. Wow. Million. Yes. 121 million rich. Rich. <laughs> That's interesting. By the way, our show is over for today. We are going to be coming your way same time on Saturday. And in the next five minutes. Yeah. We are going to be here. It's going to be an interactive session. It's going to be wonderful. And we'll be seeing you in a few minutes from now. Bye. Till we come your way. Blessings. Mm -hmm.